There are a few things you need to know about me before we get into today's review. I love worn clips. I love wild looking yet functional knives. And I love the Brothers Todd, also known as Todd Knife and Tool. And this, the Wii Roxy 4 that has sadly long been discontinued, checks all three of those boxes. Now then, I have reviewed darn near every design by the Todd Knife and Tool Bros. The Shodan by Best Tech was the first, and it rocked my world. Then there was the Best Tech Malware, which I also loved, but was sadly stolen by a sticky-fingered postal worker somewhere between here and California. Uh, then there was, of course, the Wii Knife Co. Roxy 3, which to this day is one of my all-time favorites, uh, but two have always eluded me, mainly because when they were available, I was too broke to afford them, and then when I had enough money, they had become discontinued and impossible to track down on the secondary market. The Wii Roxy, just the Roxy, the little guy, and this. The Wii Knife Co. Roxy Ford, the big daddy, the big papa, the big pimpin', but a Blade Show 2022, two gentlemen approached my wife and myself and introduced themselves as the Brothers Todd. And after a decent amount of gushing over their work and them pumping up my ego by saying they were fans of me, which feels to this day ridiculous to hear, at, at any rate, after all of the chit chat, Terrell Todd, the man himself, pulled this. Roxy 4 out of his pocket, this exact Roxy 4, handed it to me and said, just send it back when you're done. And well, here we are. This oversized full titanium frame lock captured my imagination like nothing I had seen before when I first laid eyes upon it. All of that signature Todd knife and tool insanity, the milling, the fuller, the oversized jimping on the blade spine, that massive lanyard slot, the milled titanium pocket clip that looks insane and yet somehow still functions perfectly as a pocket clip should. Sharp angles, aggressive lines everywhere you look, it's all so exceptionally different and wild and also Todd Knife and Tool. Closed up, this thing is massive, just over five inches long when closed, and a hair over an inch and a half tall. And visually, even before flipping or flicking it open, you know this is something completely different. That big Warncliffe just peeking up, showing off its substantially thick fuller, and that signature oversized oval shaped deployment slot, it's an aggressive looking thing, even when it's closed. Oh, but opening it up, Lord Jesus, turns the insanity up to 11. A flip or a flick reveals a nearest makes no difference. Four inch long textbook Warney done up in S35VN, and it is as gnarly as Warney's come. And even with that full sized finger choil, you still get a full three and three quarter inches of cutting edge. It's just outrageous in every single way, and I adore it. That profile opened up is magnificent, truly something to behold. Over nine inches of titanium and S35VN, aggressive, elegant, and absolutely mesmerizing rising as far as the looks go. Now if there's one thing I can say and have said about every Todd Knife and Tool design I've ever handled, it's that they look uncomfortable. They just do. But as is always the case, the Roxy 4 is an absolute dream in the hand. Because of the overall size of this particular piece, the size of your hand doesn't matter. Whether you've got Shaquille O'Neal size mitts or infant-like child hands such as mine, a full forefinger and endlessly secure grip is impossible to avoid. Choke way back and you can hack away at small trees and shrubbery, choke up behind the flipper tab, and you can elegantly and gracefully slice and dice your Amazon packages with ease, and choking all the way up with that giant finger choil gives you the control to tackle even the daintiest of arts and crafts kind of work. The jimping on the blade spine is well placed for a nice landing spot for your thumb and the oversized jimping on the massive titanium backspacer nestles into the nooks and the crannies of the palm and that wild looking clip, it just disappears into the hand. It's all good. I mean, it always has been. But it, I mean, this is a throwback. The Roxy Ford's a throwback and the Ergos are still mm, mm, chef's kiss. 
Now then, moving on to that blade, good god, oh, what a blade it is. As I said earlier, this 4-inch long warning is done up in S35VN, and it seems to have been decently well heat-treated, allowing me to do my months-long testing without even looking at a strop or a ceramic hone. We are dealing with some substantially thick and hardy blade stock, but thanks to that damn near full-flat grind, we are left with a deliciously thin final cutting edge. And even though we don't have any kind of sharpening toil, this blade will last a lifetime. Cutting performance is off the chain off of the friggin rails and it has done nothing less than meet and or exceed my expectations a beautiful looking blade that will gladly tackle all of your EDC needs even if at four inches long it may or may not be overkill it is an incredible piece of cutlery and finally, the action. The action is just as good as I hoped, and then some, honestly. This is a flipper with a full-length floor and giant deployment slots. The detent is insanely well-dialed, allowing you to make this behemoth of a blade do an elegant ballet. The flipper tab works great for a hearty push-button deployment, snapping that warning open with a nice satisfying clack. You can fail it, but I have to be honest, it's damn near impossible to do so. Reverse flicks or spidey flicks are endlessly enjoyable, again rewarding you with the spine-tingling clack of the lock bar kicking over into place. And the same can be said for thumb flicks. And thanks to the massive fuller on the blade, you can flick it from basically any point along the length of the blade. And on the close, because that immense slab of S35EN is running on a set of caged bearings, it gracefully and smoothly swings shut, and again greets you with a click of the detent ball snapping into place. It's, it's as satisfying and essential as I knew it would be, and I really couldn't be happier about it. Excellent action. So where does all of this leave me with the one that got away? Well, after damn near two and a half years of lusting over this thing, wanting it, needing it, I was kind of afraid that it wouldn't live up to my expectations. But I am so happy to report that I was wrong. It is just as big and ridiculous and just as beautiful as I wanted it to be. Build quality from, from we even all those years ago. Keep in mind, this is like 2019 release, 2018, three years ago plus. It's out of this world. Overall fit and finish is spectacular. The high-end materials at play and just the sheer amount of material used to put this thing together is mind-blowing. It's got a buck wild and bewilderingly beautiful four inch long Warncliffe done up in a super steel that cuts insanely well. And all four inches of the aforementioned Warney are easily manipulated thanks to absolutely friggin' dialed in detent and action. It's, it's incredible. I, I don't know what else to say. They tell you that you shouldn't meet your heroes, but with this knife, I did that twice. I finally got to handle the one that got away and I met the two immensely kind, generous, and talented gentlemen that actually made it and I am overjoyed on both counts. It, it's a winner, simple as that, but like a lot of truly excellent things in this world, you cannot just go get one. So let's start a petition to We Knife Go to bring this big gnarly folder back. The knife world will be waiting, credit cards in hand. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Bye bye now.